Hi everyone, I'm gonna try this a second time and hopefully it'll be just that much better. So thank you for being patient with me as I restart my channel. I've been on an absence due to traumatic grief and also some other issues going on in the world, taking care of myself and carrying medicine 41 years, adding to my medicine bag. So in the time that I've been off of actively creating for you here at YouTube and providing you know insights and tips as I learn them, I've actually obtained a degree in psychology I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor, let me just put that out there immediately. And I'm also obtaining some addiction medicine uh, insights by obtaining a chemical dependency counselor certificate. And as well, a raw pastry certification. So I would like to share an article with you and it's one of the articles that I used uh, in one of my second projects of three between May of 2022 and December 23 at the university working on my psychology degree and as a scholar. And I had found through a friend, I said, why don't you help me find some really great, interesting articles on iodine? And she had found Sebastiano Venturi, whose article you see here on the screen, Venturi S period. And this particular article it is a little, you know, dated, it's 2014, but it's still current enough and it's valuable in that this was a study that Dr. Venturi actually communicated with me through the academia website because I was thanking him for his research and asking him some questions and he invited me to a, a discussion on one of his other papers involving salivary gland cancer and iodine and radio radio iodine radioactive iodine so up at the top here of the paper you can see that it's um, that big chunk of a paragraph underneath the bold title of iodine deficiency in the population in Montefeltro the dogs have got to act up right now. That's called the abstract of the article. And I actually did original research where I conducted a study using Qualtrics at the university with about 150 participants that were students, staff, professors. And my topic title was iodine awareness where I included some of Dr. Venturi's research here because it's just so amazing. That's why I want to bring it to you first as I get restarted here. So that you're aware, and if you are someone who likes to go and find them and just get on your phone and, you know, just say, you know, Sebastiano, Dr. Venturi, iodine deficiency, and say the title, it'll pull up the article for you to be able to read it. It's very short. So iodine is what makes your primary thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, mostly T4 thyroxine. And thyroxine has four atoms of iodine, and it converts over and drops one of those molecules or atoms of iodine. And in that conversion process, you have basically a very short summary of the energy process. So your thyroid is basically like a reservoir for this iodine. If you read Dr. Venturi's work, you're gonna see that he talks about how 540 million years ago, we evolved from this blue-green algae into these you know, fish-like tetrapods. And we became land animals that were sort of reptilian-like. And you might say, well, I don't agree with all that. It doesn't mesh with my religion. I just kind of bypass that then without getting too fired up about it. And just understand that we do have a thyroid that does need iodine. And that as terrestrial land walking bipedal animals, we've got to have that iodine to run our metabolism, to be able to get pregnant, to be able to have our brains to work right, to not have so much brain fog. And so I wanted to bring this article and I'm gonna read a couple of things here and try to keep this as short as possible because I know we all have limited amounts of time. But according to the WHO, I'm right on that first, the abstract, the big chunk paragraph underneath the title there. According to the WHO, the World Health Organization, iodine deficiency, so not having enough, and the RDA, the required or the recommended dietary allowance is 150 MCGs, which is a microgram and not a milligram, which just barely if you're consuming bromide and exposed to fluoride and chlorine in your shower and all these other halogens, it may be using up the little tiny bit that you're getting in food if you're eating a lot of processed food. So according to the WHO, iodine deficiency, which I just explained very, very briefly, and I'll get more into it in future videos is the most common cause of preventable brain damage causing impaired cognitive development in children. And in many countries, it's still a major health problem. During pregnancy, severe iodine deficiency may impair, impair fetal development. I'm seeing this in my 41 years of not being a doctor, carrying medicine as a medicine woman, 
the closest thing of which is called today a health coach, which I do not like to align with. Uh, resulting in cretinism. Cretinism is another word for mental retardation with irreversible mental retard, excuse me, mental retardation and developmental abnormalities. Uh, you're starting to see people for many generations now that have a very Marfan looking, super long limbs, very tall, long, gaunt face. Uh, you see the thick tongues, the, the swollen tongues, the tongue ties. You see all different kinds of issues that are developmental issues, right, including genetic mutations. So this was a study uh, for endocrinological and endocrin endocrinological, the endocrine system. <laughs> And neuropsychological studies were conducted on the iodine deficient population of Montefeltro, a territory in the middle, the central Italy, right, where there wasn't as much iodine as it would be on the coast. And it was very, very interesting because um, the results that they showed in the study, which I think you'll enjoy, were dramatic improvements with school children. And it was a little too late for some of the elderly people that were living, as it says here further on, with neuropsychiatric disorders. And the last surviving cases of cretinism because using iodized sea salt, you know, if you're eating processed foods and exposed to a lot of halogens, isn't going to cut it in terms of you getting enough to build that thyroxine, which is T4, four molecules of iodine. Okay. So, and then on the bottom here, he says, I would also like to point out that research into the biochemical compounds of iodine is a new area of investigation and one which may provide insights into apoptosis. Now we've heard apoptosis with like medicinal um, non-psychoactive mushrooms like lion's mane and others that work with the BDNF, but atops, apoptosis is, uh, I was saying, you know, Pop-Tart, right? Remember it that way, that it's helping you to clear out the dead, degenerated, you know, cells that you want to be able to remove from the body so you can regenerate new cells. So apoptosis is, clearing out the old stuff and getting in the new stuff. Carcinogenesis, which means the initiation of cancer. Iodine, according to the National Institutes of Health, which I will bring up in another study and put it on the screen for you, or another review paper rather, shows that iodine in proper balance in the body, not too much, not too little, actually helps with breast pain and fibrocystic breast disease because of the fibrin issue. So think fibro, fibrin, myalgia, fibrin, muscles, trigger points. I worked in doing massage 18 years, helping people with those trigger points who had been told by the doctors they had fibromyalgia and they'd had extensive thyroid issues, breast cancer, endometriosis, endometriosis and stillborns, stillborn children as it's identified in the top abstract here that's on the screen and they still were never advised. So about iodine. So if you go to your general practitioner and you know you have thyroid symptoms, but you're not identified clinically as having a thyroid problem, you've got low basal body temperature, you have energy problems, you're feeling really sluggish, you've got coarse hair and dry skin and you don't feel good, you don't metabolize food well, you gain weight just instantly by thinking about it hypothyroid, slow down, not enough iodine or other problems, poor diet, ultra processed foods, hyperthyroid on the other side, your thyroid's been crying for a long time and nothing's been done about it. Now you're the guy that I see walking down the street when it's 20 below in Minnesota and he's got a t-shirt and shorts on and he's going, no, it feels great to me out here. And the other ones are, you know, the rest of us are multiple jackets on and you know, hoods up and gloves and everything else, and we're freezing to death. So it's getting that body to metabolize, getting your body, not that body, your body back into healthy metabolism, feeling good, lifting up out of depression and anxiety, and getting out of the habit because it starts to feel like it's a necessity. I can totally relate to using stims, stimulants, coffee, energy drinks, those erythritol bubblers that are terrible and the aluminum cans that I see people drinking all over the place in the morning that have caffeine in them and sitting in an aluminum can and then vaping cannabis and stuff at night. Now, cannabis is an excellent medicine, but if you've got to use it every single night and smoke and smoke and smoke on that throat and that thyroid gland, it's going to cause you problems if you're trying to cool down all the time. You need to figure out how to cool down 
by understanding what your metabolism is telling you. So that's what I have to say. Let's hope that the audio is working. I'm gonna try and upload this one again. Thank you for bearing with me the first time. I'm not a YouTube pro, but support me and let's see what happens. Thank you. And welcome to the new calendar year of 2024, which should have started in April. Thank you.